The wind howled outside the ancient Hotel Monte Vista, shaking the windows and rattling the hearts of its few guests. Nestled in a forgotten corner of a sleepy town, the hotel had long been rumored to harbor secrets. Secrets whispered about in the dark corners of the bar where locals gathered to drink away the evening. Few dared to stay overnight, but the thrill of a night there lured in unsuspecting wanderers like moths to a flame. Anna, weary from her travels, entered the hotel just as twilight fell. The lobby was dimly lit, casting elongated shadows that seemed to writhe and dance across the worn wooden floors. The air was thick with a sense of foreboding, and a faint smell of mildew lingered, as if the very walls were steeped in melancholy. The front desk was attended by an elderly man with a hunched back and a gaze that seemed to pierce through the veil of normalcy. His voice cracked as he spoke. One night only? You might want to reconsider. Anna dismissed his words with a nervous laugh, brushing aside the chill that crawled up her spine. She signed the guest book, the pen scratching against the page like nails on a chalkboard, leaving behind a name she soon wished she hadn't. After receiving an old-fashioned key, she trudged down the creaking hallway toward her room, unaware that the door at the end was marked with a symbol, a jagged line that seemed to pulse with dark energy. As she entered, the door clicked shut behind her, sealing her in a world far removed from reality. The room was dim, the heavy curtains blocking out any hint of moonlight, and the only sound was the distant ticking of a clock that felt painfully loud in the silence. Uh, Anna felt a twinge of unease as she dropped her bag and noticed the antique mirror hanging crookedly on the wall. It seemed to sway slightly, as if a breath of wind had stirred it, but there was no breeze. That night, as Anna lay in bed, sleep eluded her. The shadows danced along the walls, growing longer, darker, creeping toward her like the fingers of a sinister specter. She could have sworn she heard whispering, low and urgent, wrapping around her like a fog. The words were indistinct, but the tone held a sense of desperation, a plea buried beneath layers of dread. Suddenly, a loud bang jolted her from her thoughts. Heart pounding, she sat up and peered into the darkness. The clock chimed three times, echoing through the room, and she felt the temperature drop, a frosty chill creeping beneath her skin. The whispering intensified, becoming frantic, and shadows began to coalesce into something more substantial, a shape lurking just beyond the edge of her vision. Fighting her instincts to flee, Anna forced herself to look deeper into the mirror. For a moment, she thought she saw a woman standing behind her, her face twisted in agony, mouth moving as if trying to speak. Panic surged through Anna, and she turned around, heart racing, but the room was empty. When she looked back, the woman was gone, leaving only a smudge of coldness in the air. Days passed in an unsettling blur. Each night, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. Anna learned from the fleeting conversations of other guests that the hotel was cursed. Several had vanished over the years, lost to the shadows that claimed them. As she delved deeper into the hotel's history, she uncovered her tale of tales of a trail and tragedy of spirits trapped within the very walls that had once sheltered them. Each story twisted her perception of reality, her mind a battleground of fear and disbelief. On her last night, the tension reached its peak. The whispers turned into wails, echoing through the hallways. Anna could feel eyes upon her, unseen but palpable. The air was charged with a sense of impending doom, and she knew she couldn't stay another moment. Gathering her things, she raced toward the exit, only to find the door locked tight. Desperation clawed at her throat as she banged on it, pleading for release. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, the same woman from the mirror. Her face, now clearer, bore the marks of sorrow and betrayal, a haunting beauty marred by tragedy. You can't leave, she whispered, her voice both a warning and a plea. You must stay and face what has been awakened. Before Anna could react, the room seemed to shift, warping around her. The shadows coalesced, and the hotel itself became a living entity, pulsating with a life of its own. The walls groaned, and the mirror shattered, scattering shards that reflected not her image, but the anguished faces of those lost before her, each trapped in a cycle of despair, unable to escape. In a final moment of clarity, Anna understood the truth. She was now a part of the hotel's legacy, destined to wander its halls, her story merging with the others. The last thing she saw was the woman's sorrowful smile as she dissolved into the shadows, leaving Anna to join the ranks of those cursed. 
Days turned into weeks, and the Hotel Monte Vista remained, a beacon for the unwary, shrouded in mystery and fear. Those who ventured near spoke of the whispers that could be heard on the wind, calling out for the next soul to join their ranks. Anna's name would fade from memory, but her essence lingered, entwined with the hotel's dark history, and the clock continued to tick, marking the time for another unwitting guest to cross the threshold, unaware of the fate that awaited. Story number two. The old sign creaked above the entrance, swaying like a pendulum in the wind, flickering in and out of the dying light. Hotel Monte Vista, it read, letters peeling like old paint from an abandoned canvas. Amy shivered as she stepped into the dimly lit lobby, a sense of dread washing over her. The air inside was thick with dust, and the muted tones of the wallpaper seemed to pulse as shadows flickered from the fading bulbs overhead. She had planned this trip as a retreat from her hectic life, a chance to recharge and perhaps unravel the secrets that had plagued her mind since her sister's sudden disappearance a year ago. They had traveled to this very hotel, a place rumored to be haunted, but Amy had never truly believed in the supernatural. The locals spoke in hushed tones about the curse that had befallen the hotel and its patrons, a darkness that crept in when the sun set, twisting the minds of those who dared to stay. The receptionist, a frail woman with hollow eyes and an unsettling smile, handed Amy a rusty key marked Room 217. You'll find it cozy, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. With a slight nod, Amy ascended the narrow staircase, each step creaking under her weight, as if warning her to turn back. But she pressed on, clutching the key tightly, her heart racing with anticipation and a hint of fear. Room 217 was dimly lit, the only light seeping through the curtains that fluttered like ghosts in the wind. Amy set her bag down and took a deep breath, trying to shake off the feeling that someone or something was watching her. The air was thick with an unsettling silence, broken only by the distant rumble of thunder. Rain began to patter against the window, and a chill swept through the room. As she unpacked, the faint sound of whispers crept through the walls. They were indistinct at first, a murmur just beyond comprehension. Amy pressed her ear against the cold surface, trying to decipher the words. They seemed to beckon her, teasing her with the promise of secrets, long buried. With each passing minute, the whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they morphed into anguished cries. Suddenly, the lights flickered, plunging the room into darkness. Amy fumbled for her phone, the glow illuminating the terror etched on her face. Shadows twisted in the corners of her vision, and the room felt alive with unseen threats. Desperate to quell her growing panic, she reminded herself that it was just an old hotel, her, her mind playing tricks on her. But the sensation of being watched intensified. She turned abruptly, catching a glimpse of a figure standing in the corner of the room. An old woman with white hair and hollow eyes, wearing a tattered gown that seemed to absorb the darkness. You shouldn't be here. The woman rasped, her voice echoing like a forgotten melody. They'll come for you too. Amy backed away, heart pounding. Who? Who will come? But the woman only shook her head, the fear in her gaze more powerful than any words. With a flicker of the lights, she vanished, leaving only a lingering chill behind. Feeling trapped, Amy stumbled out into the hallway, the once comforting familiarity of the hotel, now a labyrinth of dread. The whispers followed her, growing louder, swirling in her mind like a tempest. She rushed down the hall, desperate to escape, when she felt a hand grip her shoulder, a cold, clammy grasp. Spinning around, she faced the old receptionist, her smile now twisted and grotesque. Checkout is at dawn, dear, she hissed, her eyes glinting with something sinister. But you might not make it until then. Panic coursed through Amy as she pushed past the woman, running to the stairwell. She bounded down the stairs, and but the air felt heavier with each step, as if the hotel itself were conspiring against her. She burst through the front doors into the pouring rain, desperate for freedom. As she ran into the night, the whispers became a cacophony, filled with laughter and sorrow. She stumbled through the deserted streets, each footfall echoing her terror. But when she looked back at the hotel, she could see figures standing in the windows, their faces distorted with anguish. They were trapped, just like her sister, lost to the darkness of the Monte Vista. Suddenly, a sharp pain pierced her chest. Amy gasped, collapsing to her knees as she clutched her heart. She could feel it, an icy tendril wrapping around her soul, pulling her back, back into the depths of the hotel. 
The ground beneath her trembled, and the rain began to fall heavier, transforming into a torrent that swept away her cries for help. As her vision blurred, she caught sight of the old woman standing at the entrance of the hotel, beckoning her with a skeletal hand. Join us, the woman crooned, her voice like silk over steel. You're one of us now. In those final moments, clarity washed over Amy. The hotel was a trap, a living entity feeding off the despair of its guests. She had come seeking answers about her sister, only to discover the horrifying truth. The hotel was alive, and it thrived on the suffering it inflicted. The whispers were the souls of those lost, a chorus of warning that had gone unheeded. As darkness enveloped her, Amy understood the curse of the Monte Vista. Once you entered, you could never truly leave. Story number three. The rain pelted the old sign of Hotel Monte Vista like a thousand tiny daggers, each drop echoing the hotel's chilling history. Beneath the flickering light, a figure stood, Evelyn, clutching her suitcase, her heart racing as she stared at the ominous structure. She had read the reviews online, heard the tales of guests who had vanished without a trace. The atmosphere was thick with unease, shadows flitting past the cracked windows, making it hard to shake the feeling that something was watching her. Evelyn stepped inside, greeted by the musty smell of mold and decay. The grand chandelier above hung like a skeletal hand, swaying slightly as if stirred by a breath of wind. The lobby was dimly lit, a heavy velvet curtain drawn across the window, muting the outside world. The receptionist, an elderly woman with sunken eyes, barely looked up from her ledger as Evelyn approached. Room for one, please, she said, her voice trembling. Room 217, the woman replied, her tone flat, devoid of any warmth. You'll want to lock the door at night. Don't let the shadows in. Evelyn's brow furrowed, but she shrugged it off as a strange joke. Thanks, she mumbled, taking the brass key, the number 217 embossed on it. As she climbed the creaky staircase, the old wood groaned beneath her, echoing her apprehensions. The room was small and sparsely furnished, a single bed pushed against the wall, a dusty armchair in the corner, and a window that overlooked the back alley, cloaked in darkness. She unpacked her bag, trying to shake off the sense of foreboding that enveloped her. The walls felt too close, the air too heavy, and the silence too profound. As night fell, the hotel seemed to come alive with a low hum, whispering secrets that danced around her ears. She locked the door and settled into the bed, trying to ignore the way her heart thudded in her chest but sleep eluded her, each tick of the clock amplifying her unease. Just as she began to drift off, a soft knock resonated through the room. Her eyes shot open, her breath hitching in her throat. Hello? She called out, her voice quaking. No answer. Just silence, thick and suffocating. The knocking came again, more insistent this time, like fingers rapping against her mind, urging her to open the door. Summoning courage, she crept to the door and pressed her ear against the cold wood. Nothing. The absence of sound was worse than the noise. Evelyn hesitated, then turned the lock. A rush of cold air greeted her as she opened the door slightly. The hallway was dark and empty, the flickering lights casting eerie shadows that danced like phantoms. Hello, she whispered, stepping out into the void. A chill ran down her spine. Then she saw it, an outline at the far end of the corridor, barely visible in the gloom. A figure, tall and shrouded in a long coat, stood facing the wall. Evelyn's heart raced. Excuse me, she called, her voice barely above a whisper. The figure turned slowly, its face obscured by a wide-brimmed hat. You shouldn't be here, it rasped, its voice a low growl, echoing in the silent corridor. Evelyn felt her throat tighten. Why not? The figure stepped forward, the shadows seeming to cling to it like a cloak. They come for you, they always do. Without thinking, she bolted back into her room and slammed the door, locking it with shaking hands. Her mind raced. What did it mean? Who were they? She turned to the window, glancing outside, but all she could see was darkness. The air in the room thickened, pressing against her chest. The shadows began to twist and shift, pooling in the corners. A low whisper rose, a cacophony of voices laced with despair. Help us, they pleaded, echoing through the air. Evelyn pressed her hands to her ears, trying to block out the sound. Suddenly, the lights flickered, plunging her into darkness. In that moment of blindness, she felt it. A presence, cold and suffocating, wrapping around her like a vice. Panic surged through her as she reached for the lamp, desperately turning it on. The light returned, but the room felt changed. 
Her suitcase lay open, clothes scattered as if something had rifled through them. In the corner, the armchair stood empty, yet it felt inhabited. Heart racing, she turned to the door, but before she could reach it, a figure materialized. A woman, gaunt and pale, with hollow eyes that seemed to penetrate her very soul. Leave this place, the woman hissed, her voice a haunting melody of sorrow. It's cursed. Evelyn felt a deep sadness wash over her, mingling with her terror. What do you mean? The shadows are hungry. They take and take. The woman's eyes gleamed with unshed tears. You have to escape before they find you. Just then, the walls of the hotel groaned, and the very foundation seemed to shake. No! Evelyn screamed, backing up, but the shadows reached out, clawing at her. The woman reached out, grasping Evelyn's wrist. You can't fight them! You must embrace the darkness to survive! In that moment, the truth hit Evelyn like a lightning bolt. The hotel wasn't just haunted. It fed on the fear and despair of its guests. She could either give in to the shadows or fight her way out. The walls closed in and a thousand voices rose, echoing the fears of all who had been trapped there. With a final surge of courage, Evelyn broke free from the woman's grasp and bolted for the door. She flung it open, racing down the corridor, the shadows clawing at her heels. The figure from earlier reappeared, but this time she saw its face, a mirror of her own, twisted with anguish. Leave while you can, it screamed. She burst through the front door, the night air crashing into her like a wave. The hotel loomed behind her, its windows like eyes, watching, waiting. As she turned to flee, she felt an unseen force tugging at her. Glancing back one last time, she saw the pale woman standing at the threshold, a silent plea etched on her face. With each step away, the weight of the shadows lessened, but the sense of dread lingered. Evelyn knew she had escaped, yet part of her remained tethered to Hotel Monte Vista, haunted by its secrets and the souls trapped within. The rain continued to fall, washing away the night, but the darkness in her heart remained, a mark of betrayal, a reminder of the unseen horrors lurking just beyond the edges of reality. Story number four. The fog rolled in thick and heavy, shrouding the small coastal town of Eldridge in a veil of gray. It clung to the cobblestone streets like a shroud, muffling sounds and swallowing the light of the street lamps, which flickered feebly in its presence. The townsfolk had grown accustomed to this eerie phenomenon, but for newcomers like Clara, the dense mist felt like a suffocating presence. She had arrived that afternoon, seeking solace from her chaotic life, only to find the town swallowed by an unsettling silence. Clara checked into the Crescent Bay Inn, an old establishment with weathered wooden beams and peeling paint that spoke of forgotten stories. The innkeeper, a gaunt man with deep-set eyes and a wary demeanor, handed her a brass key marked Room 6. Mind the fog, he cautioned. It can play tricks on your mind. With a slight shiver, Clara climbed the narrow staircase, each step echoing in the stillness. As she entered her room, the air felt heavy with an unseen weight. She brushed off the unease that settled in her gut, attributing it to her recent struggles with anxiety and depression. The window overlooked the churning sea, waves crashing against the rocks below, but even that view felt obscured by the oppressive fog. That night, as she settled into bed, Clara's thoughts drifted to her purpose for visiting Eldridge. She was here to write, to escape the memories that haunted her since her brother's tragic drowning. He had loved the ocean, a passion she had shared until it turned into a nightmare. A sense of dread gripped her as she recalled the day she lost him, the crushing waves and her helpless screams echoing in her mind. In the early hours, Clara awoke to a whisper, soft and urgent. The sound sent chills down her spine, as if the very walls were alive. She strained to listen, heart racing, but the fog muffled the voice, rendering it indistinct. Help me. Find me, it seemed to say, fading in and out like a forgotten dream. Clara sat up, eyes darting around the dim room, but she was alone. Shaken, she got out of bed and peered through the fogged window. Below, the town lay silent, the fog wrapping around the buildings like a predator. As she turned away, the whisper returned, clearer this time, pulling her toward the door. Help. Find me. Compelled by an unexplainable force, Clara wrapped herself in a heavy coat and stepped out into the night. The cold air enveloped her, the fog swirling around her like ghostly tendrils. She moved through the streets, guided by the haunting call that seemed to lead her toward the shore. With each step, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. Help! Find me! 
Clara's heart raced as she approached the rocky beach. The moon shone dimly through the mist, casting an ethereal glow on the water. She scanned the shoreline, desperate to understand what was beckoning her. And then she saw it, a figure standing at the edge of the waves. A girl, no older than 12, drenched in seawater, hair matted to her face, eyes wide and pleading. Clara's breath caught in her throat. Who are you? She called, taking a cautious step closer. The girl raised a finger, pointing toward the depths of the sea. You must find him, she whispered, her voice a haunting echo against the crashing waves. He's lost, waiting. Clara's heart raced, realization dawning upon her. The girl looked so much like her brother, a mirror of the past she had tried to bury. What do you mean? Who? she asked, fear gripping her voice. The girl stepped forward, her form flickering like a candle flame. The water took him. You must save him. No, Clara cried, backing away. I can't. The fog thickened, swirling around her as she felt the weight of the girl's gaze. You're not real. But the girl only shook her head, stepping further into the water, the waves crashing against her like a tempest. He's waiting for you. You must choose. Clara felt the ground beneath her shift, the fog pulling her toward the ocean. She stumbled, caught between her brother's memory and the girl's desperate plea. Please! Help me, she cried, tears streaming down her face. I can't lose him again. In that moment, the fog lifted slightly, revealing a vision beneath the water, a dark shape twisting and turning in the depths, trapped and tormented. Clara gasped as she recognized the outline of her brother, arms outstretched as if reaching for her. The girl's eyes glinted with an otherworldly light. Choose Clara, save him, or be lost like us. Panic surged through Clara. She could dive in and rescue him, but would that lead her to her own doom? The whispers around her rose to a fever pitch, drowning out her thoughts. Help him. Help him. With a roar of determination, Clara plunged into the icy waves, the water closing around her like a shroud. As she swam deeper, the world above faded and the whispers transformed into a haunting melody. She reached out, grasping for the shadowy figure that flickered in and out of view. Please, she begged, her voice lost in the depths. I won't let you go again. But the moment her fingers brushed against the cold skin of the shadow, a force pulled her down, dragging her into the abyss. Clara gasped, panic clawing at her throat. The realization struck her as she fought against the currents. The whispers had led her into a trap, one that would claim her soul alongside her brothers. As darkness enveloped her, Clara understood the girl was a specter, a lure of the fog, drawing lost souls into the ocean's depths. And as she sank, the last glimmer of light faded, leaving only the whispers of the forgotten behind. Story number five. The chill of autumn seeped through the cracks of Briarwood Manor, a once grand estate now shrouded in shadows and whispered legends. Ivy clung desperately to its stone facade and the wind howled as if mourning the secrets it held. Chloe had inherited the manor from a distant relative she barely knew, but the moment she crossed the threshold, an unsettling sensation washed over her, a feeling of being watched. As she stepped into the dimly lit foyer, the air felt thick with memories. Dust motes danced in the few rays of sunlight that filtered through the grime-laden windows. Her footsteps echoed unnervingly on the marble floor, and she instinctively glanced over her shoulder. Nothing. Just the emptiness of the sprawling home. Determined to restore the manor to its former glory, she began her exploration. Each room unfolded like a storybook, filled with antique furniture draped in white sheets, as if the house itself was holding its breath. But in the quiet, something felt amiss. A faint whisper brushed past her ear like the rustle of a forgotten memory. She paused, straining to hear. Chloe. The name lingered in the air, a gentle caress that sent shivers down her spine. Dismissing it as her imagination, she pressed on, but the feeling of being watched intensified. Shadows darted at the edges of her vision, and the air grew heavy with an unsettling presence. That night, she settled into the master bedroom, a cavernous space dominated by an imposing four-poster bed. As she lay beneath the fraying canopy, the creaking of the house surrounded her like the whispered warnings of the past. Just as sleep began to claim her, she was jolted awake by a loud crash from downstairs. Heart racing, she slipped out of bed and crept toward the sound. The moon cast an eerie glow through the hallway, illuminating the dust that hung like a veil. The noise had come from the parlor. Cautiously, she pushed open the door, gasping at the sight that greeted her. 
The ornate mirror that hung on the wall had shattered, shards glinting like fallen stars on the floor. Kneeling to examine the debris, she noticed something strange. In the reflection of a still intact fragment, she caught a glimpse of a woman standing behind her, her expression twisted in sorrow. Chloe spun around, but the room was empty. She could feel her heart pounding in her chest, a primal instinct urging her to flee, but she steeled herself, compelled to uncover the truth. The following day, she began to delve into the manor's history, poring over old journals and letters she found tucked away in dusty corners. The stories she uncovered were unsettling, tales of loss, betrayal, and madness. The woman from the mirror had been a resident of Briarwood, a bride who disappeared on her wedding day, never to be seen again. Her name was Eliza, and the manor had been cursed ever since. Chloe's nights grew restless, haunted by visions of Eliza. She would dream of the wedding, the beautiful gown flowing like water, and the haunting melody of a piano playing in the distance. Each morning, she awoke drenched in sweat, the echo of a forgotten lullaby lingering in her mind. As days turned into weeks, the whispers grew louder, spiraling into a cacophony of voices calling her name. Chloe, come, find me. The shadows twisted, curling around her ankles as she wandered through the house. It felt alive, every creak and sigh underscoring the urgency of the search. One stormy night, as the wind howled outside, she heard it again, a voice, stronger now, pleading. She followed it, heart racing, to the basement door that had remained locked since her arrival. With a deep breath, she forced it open, the hinges groaning in protest. Descending the stairs, the air turned frigid. She flicked on a flashlight, its beam piercing the oppressive darkness. The basement was a labyrinth of forgotten memories, walls lined with peeling wallpaper and remnants of a long-lost life. At the center stood a solitary piano, its keys dusty but intact. As she approached, the music began to play, soft and sorrowful, as if beckoning her closer. And there she saw Eliza, ethereal and translucent, seated at the piano, her fingers dancing across the keys. Chloe felt a surge of recognition that pulled her in. Eliza, she whispered, her voice trembling. The spirit turned, sorrow etched in her features. You must help me, she implored. I am trapped here, bound by the sorrow of my fate. My wedding day was my last, a curse upon this house. What do I need to do? Chloe asked, heart pounding. You must free me, find the ring I lost, the one that binds my spirit here. With renewed purpose, Chloe searched the basement, feeling the weight of unseen eyes upon her. Among the debris, she stumbled upon a small jewelry box, its latch rusted shut. With a swift motion, she pried it open, revealing a glimmering ring nestled inside. It was exquisite, adorned with a single diamond radiating a faint light. As she lifted the ring, the temperature dropped further, the shadows coalescing around her. The voices grew frantic, swirling in a frenzy of anger and despair. No, you cannot free her, they shrieked, the sound echoing in the confines of the basement. Let her go, Chloe shouted, feeling the pressure build around her. Eliza's form shimmered, her expression shifting to one of gratitude. Thank you, she breathed, and with that, she reached for the ring, her hand passing through it as if it were smoke. Suddenly, the room erupted into chaos. The shadows writhed violently, slamming against the walls, the air charged with palpable energy. Chloe felt herself being pulled into the fray, the voices crescendoing into a deafening roar. You must choose, stay or go. With a surge of determination, she flung the ring toward Eliza. The moment it left her grasp, a blinding light engulfed the basement, illuminating every corner as the shadows shrieked and writhed in agony. The light subsided, leaving behind a profound silence. When Chloe opened her eyes, the basement was empty, the piano gone, and the weight of the shadows lifted. She stood alone, the air warm and still. But as she ascended the stairs, her heart sank. The whispers had faded, yet the emptiness felt heavier than before. She stepped into the foyer, her eyes drawn to the shattered mirror, now glimmering with an eerie luminescence. In its reflection, she saw Eliza standing behind her, a smile gracing her spectral lips, a quiet peace settling over her. Then the mirror cracked further and the reflection shifted. Chloe gasped, seeing her own face distorted, a shadow creeping behind her, a reminder that while Eliza might be free, the curse of Briarwood Manor lingered, waiting for the next soul to ensnare. Chloe stumbled back, her heart racing as the mirror pulsed with a dark energy. The whispers returned, now a haunting melody of despair. In that moment, she understood. 
she was now part of Briarwood's tragic history, its secrets intertwined with her own, forever echoing in the halls of Briarwood Manor. Story number six. The dense trees of Blackwood Grove loomed over the narrow path like ancient sentinels, their gnarled branches twisting in grotesque shapes against the moonlit sky. Each step Amelia took seemed to echo through the stillness, sending chills racing down her spine. She had come to the grove, drawn by tales of the forgotten village that lay hidden within its depths, but the stories of its cursed inhabitants had fueled her trepidation. Amelia's heart raced as she ventured deeper into the grove. A heavy fog clung to the ground, swirling around her ankles and obscuring her vision. Shadows danced in the corners of her sight, and the air was thick with a sense of dread, as if the very trees whispered warnings meant for those who dared to tread this path. As she pressed on, a shiver coursed through her body when she spotted an old, crumbling sign partially hidden by overgrown ivy. Welcome to Blackwood. Beneath it, the word beware was etched in an angry scrawl. Ignoring the warning, Amelia stepped into the clearing ahead, where remnants of the village lay shrouded in mist. Houses stood in disarray, their wooden frames rotting and their roofs caved in. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves. Each abandoned structure felt like a silent sentinel holding onto secrets that had long since decayed. An unsettling feeling settled in her stomach, but her curiosity urged her to explore. As she wandered through the ruins, Amelia stumbled upon a dilapidated well at the center of the clearing. The well's stones were slick with moss, and dark water pooled at its bottom, reflecting nothing but the void. Drawn by an inexplicable force, she leaned closer, the weight of unseen eyes pressing upon her. Help us. A voice drifted through the air, soft yet haunting. It sent a jolt of fear through her, and she jerked back, scanning her surroundings. Who's there? She called, her voice trembling. Silence enveloped her, but the air grew thick with an electric tension. Suddenly, the whispers began again, swirling around her like a sinister breeze, their words indistinct but urgent. Panic gripped her heart, and she turned to flee, only to find shadows shifting at the edges of her vision. Figures flickered in the darkness, pale faces twisted in anguish, their mouths moving in silent pleas. Amelia's instincts screamed at her to run, but the fog seemed to thicken, constricting her movements. The whispers rose in volume, their tones growing desperate, almost frantic. Stay with us, they urged, wrapping around her like tendrils of smoke. She stumbled backward, her back hitting the well. As she gasped for breath, a cold hand grasped her shoulder. Whirling around, she came face to face with a girl no older than ten, her eyes wide with fear, filled with tears that glimmered in the moonlight. You have to help us. They won't let us leave. Amelia's heart broke at the sight, but her fear overshadowed her empathy. Who? Who won't let you leave? She stammered. Before the girl could answer, the whispers turned into anguished screams and shadows began to swirl around them. The figures coalesced, revealing more children, their faces ashen and hollow. We were trapped here. Just like you will be, one of them cried, their voice filled with a haunting echo of despair. Please, Amelia begged, her heart racing. How can I help you? The girl pointed to the well. You must free us. The water is cursed. It holds our souls captive. With a surge of determination, Amelia approached the well, the whispers intensifying around her. She peered into the dark abyss, her reflection barely visible in the murky depths. She knew what she had to do. Taking a deep breath, she reached into her pocket and pulled out a small stone she had found earlier in her journey, a smooth, round pebble that seemed to hum with energy. As she dropped the stone into the well, the water began to bubble and churn, and the ground shook beneath her feet. The anguished faces of the children began to fade, their screams merging into a chorus of relief and gratitude. Thank you, they cried, their forms dissolving into light. You've freed us. In that moment, a blinding flash illuminated the grove and the whispers subsided. Amelia shielded her eyes, and when she lowered her hand, the village appeared transformed. The ruins had vanished, replaced by vibrant homes and laughter echoing through the trees. The children, now free, danced around her in joyous celebration, but the moment was fleeting. The ground trembled once more and darkness encroached. Amelia realized with dawning horror that she had only released the children. The malevolent force still lingered, hungry for a new soul to bind to its curse. She turned to flee, 
but the shadows surged forward, enveloping her like a thick fog. The laughter of the children faded into distant echoes as the darkness swallowed her whole. Amelia's scream was lost among the whispers, now beckoning the next unwitting traveler to Blackwood Grove. And as the fog rolled back over the grove, the sign reappeared, warning of the cursed village that lay in wait for those who dared to venture too far. Story number seven. In the heart of the Maplewood Forest stood a tree unlike any other, a towering oak with a gnarled trunk and twisted branches, its bark scarred with deep grooves. Locals called it the Hollow Tree, a name that struck fear into the hearts of those who had heard the stories surrounding it. Children dared each other to approach, but no one ever ventured too close, for it was said to be cursed, a vessel for dark spirits and lost souls. Sarah had grown up in the nearby town, hearing whispers about the tree from her friends. The tales of those who disappeared in its shadows made her shudder, yet curiosity gnawed at her, a longing to uncover the truth behind the legends. As summer waned, she decided it was time to face her fears. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and her determination, she ventured into the forest at dusk when the light faded and the world transformed into a realm of shadows. The deeper she went, the thicker the fog became, wrapping around her like a cold embrace. The forest was silent, save for the crunch of leaves underfoot and the occasional rustle of unseen creatures. With each step, a sense of dread coiled in her stomach. What would she find at the hollow tree? Would it be the supernatural horror that had been etched in her mind, or merely an old, rotting trunk? When she finally reached the tree, her breath hitched. The hollow tree loomed above her, a dark silhouette against the dimming sky. Its hollow trunk yawned open, a black void inviting her in. Goosebumps prickled her skin as she recalled the stories, the souls trapped within, crying out for release. A part of her wanted to turn back, but another part, the part that craved answers, urged her to step closer. Clutching her flashlight, Sarah approached the gaping hole. Shadows danced within, and she peered into the darkness, her heart racing. A soft whisper echoed from the depths, a voice barely audible yet haunting. Help me, please. The sound sent a jolt of fear through her, yet she couldn't pull away. Is someone there? She called, her voice trembling. The whisper responded, beckoning her deeper. Help me find peace. Against her better judgment, she stepped forward, the beam of her flashlight illuminating the hollow interior. Inside, the air was thick and cool, and the ground was littered with fallen leaves and brittle twigs. She felt a strange pull, an invisible force, urging her deeper into the hollow. Who are you? She asked, the tremor in her voice betraying her resolve. The whispering grew louder, a cacophony of voices rising from the darkness. Help us, free us. Suddenly, the shadows coalesced, forming a figure, a young boy, his face pale and gaunt, eyes wide with desperation. Please, he pleaded, you have to help us, we can't leave. Fear gripped Sarah, but compassion swelled in her chest. What happened to you? Why can't you leave? The boy's expression darkened, his features twisting into a mask of sorrow. The tree holds us captive. We were drawn in, just like you. If you help us, you can escape. A chill crept down Sarah's spine. What do you mean? How do I help? Find the heart, the boy whispered, pointing deeper into the hollow. It's buried within. Only by releasing it can we be free. With a mix of dread and determination, Sarah pressed on, the air growing heavier with each step. She stumbled upon a root protruding from the ground, twisted and gnarled like the tree itself. At its base, she spotted something glinting, a small heart-shaped stone pulsing with a faint light. As she reached for it, the boy's voice echoed in her mind. Hurry, we don't have much time. But just as her fingers brushed against the stone, the hollow trembled, the shadows twisting into a whirlwind of anguish. No, the boy screamed. It's a trap. Sarah froze, panic surging through her. The voices morphed into wails of despair, clawing at her mind. You shouldn't have come. You're one of us now. In that moment, the truth crashed over her like a wave. This wasn't a rescue mission. The hollow tree fed on the souls of the lost, drawing them in with the promise of freedom, only to ensnare them further. The boy's pleading was a siren's call, a deception born from the tree's insatiable hunger. Run, the boy cried, but the shadows closed in, dark tendrils wrapping around her ankles, pulling her toward the heart. Please, don't leave us. Desperation ignited a spark of courage within her. With a swift motion, she yanked her hand away from the stone, turning to flee. 
The hollow walls pulsed with rage, the voices rising in a chorus of fury as she sprinted toward the exit. She could feel the darkness reaching for her, grasping at her clothes and hair, but she pushed through, driven by instinct. Bursting into the cool night air, Sarah gasped for breath, the fog swirling around her like angry spirits. She sprinted away from the tree, heart pounding, the wails of the trapped souls fading into the distance. But as she glanced back, she saw the boy standing at the edge of the hollow, eyes filled with despair. You can't escape, he called, his voice swallowed by the night. You'll be back. They always come back. The forest seemed to shift around her, the trees bending as if they were alive, watching her with hungry eyes. The path she had taken felt foreign, twisting and turning, disorienting her. Sarah ran until her legs ached, until she burst out of the forest and into the safety of her town. But the relief was short-lived. Days turned into weeks, and no matter how hard she tried to forget, the whispers of the hollow tree haunted her dreams. The boy's desperate eyes remained etched in her mind. Every night the fog rolled in, wrapping around her like a familiar shroud, whispering promises of peace. And every night the trees outside her window seemed to sway, beckoning her to return. Story number eight. In the heart of the small town of Eldridge, a twisted, gnarled tree stood alone on a hill, its branches reaching like skeletal fingers into the sky. Known to the townsfolk as the wishing tree, it bore the weight of countless whispered hopes and dreams, but it was also the source of dark legends. It was said that those who wished on the tree were granted their desires, but at a terrible cost. Lily, a bright-eyed teenager, had grown up hearing the tales of the wishing tree. Her friends often dared each other to visit it at night, but Lily had never been brave enough, until now. After her family faced a devastating loss, she felt an overwhelming sense of desperation. The world had turned gray, and the weight of sorrow was a constant burden on her shoulders. One moonless night, driven by a need for solace, she made her way up the hill, the grass whispering beneath her feet. The air was thick with tension, and a shiver crawled down her spine as she reached the tree. Its bark was rough and cold, and the very air around it hummed with a strange energy. She hesitated, her heart racing, but the thought of bringing her loved one back urged her on. Please, she whispered, her voice trembling. I wish for one more chance to see him again. As the words left her lips, a gust of wind swirled around her, rustling the leaves in a cacophony of whispers. It felt as if the tree had heard her, and an unsettling thrill coursed through her veins. Suddenly, a voice echoed in the silence, a soft, melodic whisper. Your wish can be granted, but every wish carries a price. Lily's heart sank, but desperation overshadowed her fear. I'll pay anything, she vowed, gripping the rough bark. The wind howled and the branches quivered as the voice responded. You must choose wisely. A heart's desire can bring joy, but it can also bring sorrow. Are you prepared to face the consequences? I am, she replied, determination hardening her resolve. With a shuddering breath, she placed her hands against the tree. The ground trembled beneath her, and the world faded into darkness. In the void, she felt a warmth enveloping her, and suddenly she was standing in her childhood home. The familiar scent of baking cookies filled the air, and her heart soared as she heard laughter echoing from the kitchen. Lily! Her father's voice rang out, vibrant and full of life. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she rushed toward the sound. There he was, smiling, cooking just like he used to. She threw her arms around him, feeling the warmth of his embrace, but as quickly as the joy had come, a sense of dread tugged at her heart. Dad, she choked out, pulling back to look at him. Is this real? He frowned, confusion flickering in his eyes. Of course, sweetheart. Why wouldn't it be? But as she gazed into his eyes, they were not the warm, comforting pool she remembered. They were hollow, shadows lurking beneath the surface. A chill ran through her, and the room began to shift, the walls warping like a funhouse mirror. Dad, she called out, panic rising in her chest. The laughter turned to whispers, echoing through the hallways like distant screams. The joyful scene began to unravel, revealing a darker reality. She stumbled back, realizing her father was nothing more than a figment of her imagination, a cruel trick played by the wishing tree. The price of her wish had woven a nightmare into the fabric of her heart's desire. Please, no, she screamed, but the house dissolved into shadows, leaving her alone in the emptiness of the void once more. Lily found herself back at the wishing tree, her heart pounding. What have you done? She cried. You promised me a chance. 
the wind rustled the leaves, and the voice returned, tinged with mockery. Your heart desired a reunion, but the heart does not know the price of its wishes. To see him again was your wish, yet he remains lost to you. Despair crushed her. What can I do? Each wish you make can turn into a curse, the tree replied. One wish can never undo the loss. Choose again if you wish to free him from the chains of this world. Lily fell to her knees, anguish spilling from her heart. I'll do anything. Please, just bring him back. Very well, the tree whispered, and darkness enveloped her once more. When she opened her eyes again, the world around her had transformed. She stood in a desolate wasteland, the sun hidden behind dark clouds. Shadows writhed in the corners of her vision, whispering her name. A figure appeared in the distance, stumbling through the debris. It was her father, but his face was gaunt and twisted, eyes sunken and devoid of life. Dad! She cried, rushing toward him, but as she reached out, he turned, revealing a hollow grin that sent chills coursing through her. You should never have wished for me, he hissed, his voice echoing with the weight of despair. No, this can't be real, she shouted, backing away. The shadows danced closer, their whispers turning into a cacophony of voices, each one a shattered hope, a curse left unbroken. You wanted him back, they taunted. Now he's yours to keep. Terror consumed her. I didn't want this. Yet you wished for it, the tree echoed, its voice now booming and merciless. Every desire bears a consequence, and you shall bear yours alone. Desperate, Lily turned and fled, her heart racing. The shadows pursued her, clawing at her heels, and she felt the weight of her father's presence pressing in on her. The land twisted around her, the sky darkening with each step. But in her flight... A glimmer of hope pierced through the despair. She remembered the stories. The wishing tree could not only grant desires, but also break curses. The power to reclaim her life lay in her hands. With newfound determination, she raced back toward the tree, shouting, I wish to free him. I wish for him to rest in peace. The earth trembled, and the shadows hesitated, swirling around her in confusion. The voice of the tree resonated once more, stronger now. Your heart's desire must be true. Are you prepared to bear the weight of this wish? Yes, I'll bear it. The shadows screamed as the tree erupted with blinding light, enveloping Lily in a cocoon of warmth. She felt her father's presence fading, his twisted form dissipating into the ether. In that moment, a profound silence fell. The shadows retreated and the world shifted back to reality. Lily stood beneath the wishing tree, heart racing, her father's spirit finally at peace. But as the light faded, she felt a new emptiness within her. A hollow space where her heart's desire had once thrived. She had saved him, but at the cost of her own happiness. As she turned to leave, she glanced back at the tree, its gnarled branches still twisting in the wind. The wishing tree had granted her desire, but now she understood its true nature. Every wish came with a price, and she was left to carry the burden of her sacrifice. A bittersweet reminder that some wishes should never be made. Story number nine. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an eerie glow over Hollow Creek, a village hidden deep within the woods. The air was thick with an unsettling stillness, as if the forest held its breath, waiting for something to happen. The villagers spoke in hushed tones of the lantern festival that was to take place that night, a celebration tinged with whispers of ancient curses and forgotten rituals. Sarah had just moved to Hollow Creek, seeking solace from a recent heartbreak. As the shadows lengthened, she felt an inexplicable pull toward the village square, where lanterns flickered to life, casting ghostly patterns on the cobblestones. The villagers gathered, their faces illuminated by the warm glow, but their eyes held a flicker of unease, darting toward the woods that loomed like a dark specter. As Sarah joined the crowd, a chill crept up her spine. An old woman, her back hunched and skin wrinkled like parchment, stood at the center of the square, clutching a lantern that flickered unnaturally. Tonight, we honor the lost, she croaked, her voice a rasping whisper, but beware the shadows that linger. The villagers murmured, casting furtive glances at the encroaching darkness. Sarah felt a sense of foreboding wash over her. What shadows, she asked, her voice trembling. They come for those who do not remember the woman replied, her gaze piercing into Sarah's, for those who stray too far from the light. As the festival began, the villagers lit their lanterns, their flickering flames battling against the encroaching night. Laughter filled the air, but it felt hollow, 
echoing off the trees as if mocking the villagers' joy. Sarah felt out of place, a stranger in a community shrouded in secrets. As the night wore on, she noticed a group of children wandering near the edge of the forest, their laughter ringing out like a siren's call. Compelled by curiosity, she followed them, her heart racing as the shadows deepened. The lanterns behind her flickered ominously, casting long, wavering shadows that danced along the ground. Come play with us, one child called, beckoning her closer. Their eyes glinted mischievously in the darkness, and Sarah hesitated, sensing something amiss. What are you doing? she asked, her voice barely a whisper. Finding the lost ones. Another child chimed in, their laughter echoing eerily. They hide in the dark, but we can find them if we have enough light. An inexplicable urge surged within her. Ignoring her instincts, Sarah stepped further into the shadows, drawn to the laughter that rang out like a haunting melody. But as she ventured deeper, the laughter twisted into something more sinister, and the atmosphere shifted. The air grew heavy, oppressive, as if the forest itself were closing in around her. Suddenly, the children vanished, swallowed by the darkness. Panic gripped her, and she spun around, but the lanterns from the festival were now distant pinpricks of light, barely illuminating the path back. The laughter transformed into soft whispers, words brushing against her consciousness like a cold breeze. Join us. Stay with us. Heart pounding, she ran, the shadows clawing at her heels. As she stumbled through the underbrush, the trees seemed to twist and bend, their branches reaching out as if to snatch her back into their embrace. Desperation clawed at her throat as she finally caught sight of a flickering lantern, its light shimmering like a beacon. But as she approached, the warmth of the flame felt cold and distant. The villagers stood in a circle, their faces pallid, their eyes hollow. You strayed too far, the old woman's voice echoed, now a haunting refrain. The shadows have claimed you. What do you mean? Sarah gasped, her breath coming in ragged gasps. I just wanted to celebrate. You should have remembered, she replied, her tone grave. Every year we honor the lost, but we also feel pay tribute to those who wander too close to the edge of darkness. The whispers returned, louder now, an overwhelming chorus of voices from the depths of the forest. Stay with us, join us, they chanted, and the shadows writhed, reaching for Sarah. In that moment, she understood the truth. The Lantern Festival was a guise, a ritual to appease the spirits trapped within the woods. Those who strayed too far were bound to the shadows, lost to the darkness forever. Help me, she cried, but the villagers merely watched, their eyes devoid of empathy, as if they too were bound by the curse. The old woman raised her lantern, its flickering flame morphing into a brilliant, blinding light. You must choose, she said softly. Return to the light or embrace the dark. In a moment of clarity, Sarah turned and sprinted back into the forest, the shadows clawing at her heels. The lanterns behind her faded, their glow replaced by the darkness that threatened to consume her. With every step, she felt the weight of the shadows, urging her to surrender. But the thought of being lost forever drove her onward. As she burst from the trees, she stumbled back into the village square, collapsing at the feet of the villagers. They looked down at her, their faces a mask of indifference. The old woman stood among them, her lantern still flickering ominously. You have returned, but at a cost, she murmured, her gaze unwavering. In that instant, Sarah realized she could never fully escape the shadows. The darkness that had beckoned her would forever linger, a part of her now. The laughter of the children echoed in her mind, a reminder of the cost of curiosity and the dangers of straying too far from the light. As the lanterns dimmed, the villagers resumed their festivities, a hollow celebration for those who remained while Sarah sat at the edge of the square, trapped between two worlds, forever haunted by the whispers of Hollow Creek. Story number 10. The heavy air in Eldridge Manor felt alive, charged with secrets that whispered through the halls like a forgotten memory. Shadows stretched across the ornate wallpaper and the creaking floorboards echoed with every hesitant step Emma took. She had inherited the manor from a distant relative, an eccentric aunt who had filled it with antiques, oddities, and one peculiar item that intrigued her most. An ornate mirror draped in cobwebs, hidden behind a velvet curtain in the attic. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Emma felt an inexplicable pull to the attic. She climbed the staircase, her pulse quickening with each step, the wooden stairs groaning under her weight. Dust motes floated in the fading light, 
swirling in a dance that felt almost sentient. When she reached the attic door, she paused, her breath catching in her throat. The mirror awaited her, its frame intricately carved with symbols she couldn't decipher. Pulling back the curtain, Emma gasped. The mirror's surface shimmered like a still lake, reflecting not just the room, but also a sense of something more, something lurking just beyond the glass. She stepped closer, her fingers grazing the cool surface. As she did, a shiver raced down her spine and the reflection shifted, distorting her image into something darker, more twisted. Who are you? A voice echoed, sharp and ethereal. Emma stumbled back, heart racing. The reflection now showed a figure, a woman with hollow cheeks and sunken eyes, her face framed by dark hair. Help me, she whispered, her voice hauntingly beautiful yet filled with despair. What do you want? Emma stammered, entranced and terrified. The woman raised a hand, pressing it against the glass, her expression pleading. Free me from this prison, she begged. I am trapped here, bound by the darkness that took me. The air in the attic grew colder and Emma felt a presence wrapping around her like a fog. Despite the fear creeping in her mind, curiosity urged her forward. How? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The mirror holds my soul, the woman explained, her eyes glinting with a mixture of hope and sorrow. You must break the curse. What curse? Emma pressed, her heart pounding. The curse of the mirror, she replied. It draws in those who look too long, and I am but one of many. Images flashed through Emma's mind, stories of people who had gone missing over the years, drawn into the manor's grasp. Why should I help you? Emma asked, suddenly wary. What if you're just trying to trap me? The woman's expression darkened, her eyes narrowing. Because I am your only chance to escape this place. You don't belong here. You must find the heart of the manor, the source of its darkness. Only then can I be free, and so can you. A chill settled in Emma's bones as the room seemed to warp around her, the walls closing in. Where do I find it? She asked, her voice trembling. In the cellar, behind the wall of whispers, the woman instructed. But beware. The darkness will try to stop you. Trust no one, not even yourself. With that, the mirror's surface rippled and Emma stumbled back, breathless. The woman's face faded, leaving only her reflection staring back, fear etched in her features. Determined to uncover the truth, Emma left the attic, the weight of the mirror's words heavy on her mind. As she descended to the cellar, a sense of foreboding enveloped her. The air was thick with dampness and the smell of decay. Shadows flickered in the corners, whispering secrets she couldn't understand. She followed the narrow path, her flashlight beam slicing through the darkness until she reached a stone wall, faint whispers echoing from the other side. Help us? Help us. The voices chimed, a haunting melody that sent chills racing down her spine. Gathering her courage, Emma pressed her hands against the cold stone, searching for a way through. Suddenly, a low growl emanated from the shadows, and a figure emerged, a tall, gaunt man with hollow eyes and a twisted grin. You shouldn't have come here, little girl, he rasped, stepping closer. This place feeds on your fears, and you are just a morsel. Panic surged through her, but Emma stood her ground. I'm not afraid of you, she lied, her heart racing. She could feel the whispers intensifying, urging her to find a way through. With a surge of determination, she reached into her pocket, pulling out a small silver pendant her aunt had given her. It shimmered in the darkness, casting a soft glow that seemed to repel the shadows. The man recoiled, hissing at the light. Stay back, she shouted, holding the pendant like a weapon. I'm here to end this. As the whispers grew louder, the stone wall trembled and cracks began to form. Emma pressed the pendant against the wall, focusing on the heart of the manor, the darkness it held. I won't let you keep me here. The wall shattered, revealing a small chamber bathed in ethereal light. At its center lay a pulsating orb, dark tendrils of smoke swirling around it. The moment Emma stepped inside, the whispers ceased, replaced by a deafening silence. Destroy it! The woman's voice rang in her mind. And the curse! Heart pounding, Emma lunged forward, gripping the orb tightly. A surge of energy coursed through her, and the shadows shrieked in protest, thrashing against her. She could feel the darkness clawing at her, trying to pull her back into its grasp. With a final, determined thrust, Emma hurled the orb against the wall. It shattered into a thousand shards of light, the darkness screaming as it dissipated into the air. The walls trembled and the manor shook as the oppressive weight lifted, leaving behind a sense of peace. 
but just as the light enveloped her, a sharp pain pierced her chest. She looked down to see the figure of the gaunt man lunging at her, his hand gripping her heart, pulling her into the void. You're mine, he roared, his voice echoing through the chamber. As darkness consumed her, Emma felt the weight of despair dragging her down, the screams of the lost souls resonating in her mind. But in her last moments, she heard the woman's voice again, a gentle whisper amidst the chaos. You were brave, Emma. Remember, light always conquers darkness. The shadows closed in, and just like that, everything went dark. Days later, the townsfolk gathered to discuss the old manor, which now stood silent and empty, its secrets buried. The mirror remained untouched, draped in cobwebs, they waiting for the next curious soul to approach. Uh, but deep within the darkness, the whispers continued, a haunting lullaby for those who dared to listen.